Hello, this is Professor Morrison, and here is your presentation regarding the definition essay. What is a definition essay? A definition essay explains what a term means, sets the boundaries of a thing, concept, emotion, or value, answers what it is as well as what it is not, and specifies the main qualities and its essential nature. There are different kinds of definitions. There are formal definitions, stipulative definitions, and extended definitions. A formal definition usually gives the standard dictionary meaning or the specialized meaning agreed to by a particular group. A statement of a general class followed by the distinction between it and other members of its class are the standard traits of a formal definition. Here are some examples of formal definition. The first term is submarine. Submarine's general class is a seagoing vessel. The distinction of a submarine from other members of its general class is that it operates underwater. A second term would be insanity. Its general class is a mental condition. The distinction, the thing that separates it from other items in its general class, is insanity is a term in which a defendant does not know right from wrong. It's most useful to use a formal definition to explain the basic or most commonly used meaning of a term in order for the reader to understand the rest of the discussion or essay. A formal definition should only be used as a starting point. The next kind of definition is a stipulative definition. And this stipulates or clarifies the particular way that you are using a word that has different ways to be defined. So here are some examples of stipulative definitions. If you want to argue that pride can ruin a relationship, you might first stipulate a meaning of pride that ties in with that purpose. If you want to argue that love is all you need, you might stipulate a particular kind of love that you are discussing. It's best to use a stipulative definition when the concept you are discussing is broadly defined and used. There are different definitions that people understand for this term and you're using the term in a specific way and you want that to be very clear to your audience. The next type of definition is the extended definition, which is what we are doing in our definition essay. The extended definition is used to explore a thing, quality, or idea in its full complexity. It draws boundaries around it until its meaning is complete and precise. Besides defining your purpose, it may be used to persuade readers to accept a definition, to explain, or to amuse. But if you're using amusement, please only slightly. That should not be your main focus in your essay. Here are some examples of when to use an extended definition. When you're trying to explain an abstract concept like patriotism, that would be a good time to use an extended definition. Or perhaps you're trying to define a controversial phrase like the beginnings of life, or a colloquial or slang expression such as hype, or a thing like a microcomputer, or a scientific idea like natural selection, or an everyday expression like nagging. These are all multifaceted, complex terms that would take an extended definition to truly explain them to an audience. We use extended definition when the subject is complex, vague, laden with emotions or values, misunderstood, or arguable. 
and everyone is definitely going to write an extended definition. Here's how to write an extended definition essay. Step one, choosing a topic. Now, most of the time, I'm going to have a list of topics for you to choose from. In other classes, you may be asked to select your own topic. However, I, Professor Morrison, will always provide you with a list to choose from, and you must choose from that list. In this list, there will be words that have complex meanings, words that are open to varied interpretations, words that may be unfamiliar to readers, but it should be something that you know and care enough about to explore in great detail and surround completely. A definition essay may try and define the meaning of an abstract concept like love, the true meaning and importance of honesty, or perhaps even how the meaning of family goes deeper than just your blood relatives. So a definition essay attempts to define a specific term. It tries to pin down the meaning of a specific word or define an abstract concept, and it goes so much deeper than a simple dictionary definition. A definition essay attempts to explain why this term is defined in this manner. It could define the term directly, giving no information other than the explanation of the term, or it could imply the definition of the term telling a story that requires the reader to infer the meaning. Step two, explore your topic. Examine and list some conventional meanings of your term, possibly consult a dictionary. Examine differences of opinion regarding the word, the different ways wrong or right that you've seen or heard it used. If you have the opportunity, ask others what they think it means. Step three, strategies to consider. How can the subject be described? What are some examples? Can the subject be divided into qualities or characteristics? Can its functions help define it? Will comparing and contrasting it with something else help sharpen its meaning? Do its causes or effects help clarify its sense? Other defining strategies. Synonyms convey the range of the word's meanings. Negation convey what the word does not mean and how this limits the meaning or focus. Etymology, convey its varied or original meaning. Note that the previous strategies may be used separately or in combination to create your desired effect. Step four, select your purpose. Are you explaining an unfamiliar word? Are you expressing your own views so that readers see a familiar subject from a new angle? Are you arguing in favor of a particular definition? Or are you persuading readers to look more closely at themselves or their surroundings? Three steps to effective definition. One, tell readers what term is being defined. Two, present clear and basic information. Three, use facts, examples, or anecdotes that readers will understand. It's important to limit your term before you start defining it. For example, you could write forever on the term love. To limit it, you would either write about romantic love, platonic love, first love, puppy love, universal love. The list goes on. You would need to pick one. When you do an outline, your introduction should follow the following format. You always start with a hook or attention getter. 
then you might want to include the traditional definition from the dictionary here to provide a basis for your personal definition. You may want to open with a contradictory image to illustrate what that term is not. And then you'll want to end with your thesis statement. Your thesis should include the word you're defining and the direction of your essay, which may be implied. Here's an example of a good thesis that includes your three supporting points that you should always have in your plan of development at the end after your main idea. Here's an example. The term monster does not refer to an individual of hideous appearance, but rather the term monster refers to one who partakes in immoral acts or decisions, such as those that harm others, those that harm themselves, and those that harm the environment. So let me get my pen out here and I'm going to show you here we have the term monster and this is an accepted definition that is standard in society and I'm making a mess here but you see it. <laughs> and then rather we have the term again we're saying what it is not and then we're going to say what our stipulated extended definition is. Uh, one who partakes in immoral acts or decisions and then we have our plan of development which is our three supporting points and we're going to plan a body paragraph for each of these points so one paragraph on harming others one on harming themselves and one on harming the environment and then we have a nice full complete single sentence thesis statement that is placed as the last sentence of the introduction So you really need to focus on your thesis statement because that's the roadmap for you when you're writing the paper and also for your audience when they're reading it. So you definitely need to have the term to be defined, the definition of the term, the reasons for giving a more detailed definition which may be implied, why is it important to understand this term, and the kinds of additional information that will be used to extend the definition. That's your plan of development, your three supporting points. And again, you should have a paragraph for each one. In your introduction, before you reach that all-important thesis statement, remember that you do need that background information. Your introduction is so much more than a thesis statement. We need to know why you picked this topic from the list, but you should never say, I picked this topic from the list because, because that would be an announcement and we do not ever do that. Instead, you should explain why the definition is significant or necessary for the audience to understand. Now remember, you're not going to know what the topics are to choose from until the folder with the assignment instructions opens. So in that background information that leads up to your thesis statement, you have choices um, consider reporting the incident or event that made this definition relevant to you. Tell a little story. Use your narrative skills. You could consider using a quotation from another writer that supports or contradicts your definition. You could explain what the word does not mean, which is negation. Or you could discuss the etymology of the word, which is not the definition, instead it's the origin and the background. As you continue outlining, your body paragraphs are used to um, support your main idea, that extended definition. You should have a body paragraph for each of the supporting points that you have listed at the end of your thesis statements. So you can use different patterns of organization. We have counterpoints or negation. What is it not? What can it do? We have maybe a task that we're describing, so we're gonna use a process approach or there are illustrations, just lots and lots of examples, perhaps. So in our monster example, the thesis statement, we have that monsters are those who harm themselves, others, or the environment. That would definitely be this particular type of organization. Illustrations, examples of how somebody who's destroying the environment 
is a monster and maybe what they did to the river or the stream or the ocean, etc. As you continue your outline for the body paragraphs, keep in mind that you can use descriptions, maybe a formal one-line definition like this example here, cheese is a solid food prepared from the pressed curd of milk often seasoned and aged. And then you would go forward from there. Concrete details are always important to include. What are the physical characteristics you're trying to describe? What is remarkable and unique about this? Analysis is great. Divide the subject into parts and define each part separately. Or you could use a comparison and contrast. What similarities or differences can you identify when compared to something else? More strategies to consider would be perhaps narrative, telling a story that helps to illustrate the depth of meaning in the term. Maybe effects, discuss the uses and consequences, both positive and negative, of the subject. As you can see, we're really pulling from our tool bag of things that we've learned in this class already and putting them together to form our extended definition essay, which is why it comes at the end of the class. The body should proceed paragraph by paragraph to refine the characteristics or qualities of the term being defined. The body should include as many previously mentioned defining strategies as necessary to adequately fulfill your purpose. As you organize your body, you might move from general to specific. Or you might arrange your points in order of increasing importance. Or you could begin with a personal experience and show how your definition operates in your environment. It's really up to you. As you continue to outline and organize your thoughts for the definition essay, your conclusion definitely should wrap up your thoughts. Nothing new goes in the conclusion. Summary is what works in a conclusion. We need to get the attention of our audience. Maybe we can reference back to the opening attention getter. If we asked a question to begin with, perhaps we answer it now. Um, maybe we had a quote in the beginning and we can remind the reader of that quote. Reflection is always great. Include a comment about the term or a summarizing statement regarding the paper itself. Um, you could also end with an explanation of how your definition has affected you, which then emphasizes its importance, which you did mention in the beginning already. So you're coming full circle in your conclusion. As you're planning your essay, always keep in mind what your focus is. Abstract terms such as love, pain, or patriotism have different meanings for different individuals since such terms play on people's feelings more than their physical senses. The definition essay provides a personal, extended definition of such terms by linking or comparing the term to a previous definition and by illustrating how that term should be applied. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I'm only an email away.